Hey everybody, I'm Maxime Bonnier, I'm a senior developer advocate at MongoDB based in France. And today I want to show you how to deploy your very first application on Azure Spring Apps. So of course, this is going to be a Java Spring Boot application, and this is going to connect to a cluster in MongoDB Atlas. Let's jump right in and see how we can do that. First of all, uh, what we're going to see uh, today uh, is actually available in this blog post in the uh, MongoDB Developer Center. So if you want to uh, take a step back and have a look to the step-by-step -step guide, of course, you can just uh, check this blog post online. Um, what we're going to do today is uh, publish this application that you can find in MongoDB-Developer Organization in GitHub. And so that's the one we're going to deploy on uh, the Azure uh, Spring application uh, services. Um, all right, so let's get going. So first of all, if you don't have Azure Spring apps here uh, in your Azure services, you can go to More Services, and you can type Spring, for example, here, and you will find the Azure Spring apps. So we are going to create a new one. And as you can see, I don't have a resource group, so I'm just going to create a new one. Let's say it's going to be uh, like Maxime Spring apps, for example, click OK. Uh, I need a name. Oh, that was a name group. It doesn't matter. Uh, so I'm going to call this Maxim Spring apps as well. OK, and uh, region I'm going to deploy in France because I'm based in France right now. Then you need to select your hosting. Uh, for me, it's a basic tutorial, so I will go with the basic um, at here. That's enough for me. And that's it. I'm just going to click uh, on the next step. I can keep the diagnostic. I don't need the insights because it's just a demo. Don't need to touch networking. Don't need tags. And I can just review and then create my, uh, my application. So in a second, I will be able to click on Create. And my application is now being created right now. All right. So I just need to wait for a few seconds, and it's going to be ready for me to use. Uh, in the meantime, I can uh, now prepare the Spring application we're going to deploy here. So uh, go to this repository, and then you can just clone it. Right. So I've done that already. Uh, but of course, you just select this, or you can download the zip file as well, if you like. So let's head to um, a shell now for me. Right. I'm going to reset everything. And so what you need to do is just uh, so clone, go in the repository in the in the folder. You should see something like this. And then you can just type maven clean package. That's all we need. Uh, I'm using Java 21 in this version. So uh, make sure you have your GDK 21 uh, up and configured correctly. And you should have a build successful. Um, just one thing to note is that I didn't modify anything in the repository. Especially, I did not modify, for example, the um, um, the Atlas uh, URI, the MongoDB Atlas URI that you need to be able to connect to MongoDB. So I didn't do that because uh, actually, if you go to source, main, resources, and in the application properties file, in this spring application, you can see that the uh, MongoDB URI that I'm using to connect to MongoDB actually uh, tries first to use the value that is in the environment variable called MongoDB underscore URI. And if this is not set, then it defaults to MongoDB localhost. So of course, for us, I will need to have to define this environmental variable in Azure Spring apps to make sure that I can connect uh, to my service uh, correctly. right? So let's 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 do that. So now I have my uh, my um, my um, jar file ready. Uh, it's in the uh, target, and that's the one I want to deploy, right? So this is a fat jar with everything bolted on in it, right? As you can see, it's quite uh, quite heavy, uh, and you have the uh, Tomcat in it and everything you need. All right. So uh, let's get back to our project. And let's see if this is ready. So this is not ready right now. So I'm just going to pause the recording for a second, and it should be ready in just one second. OK, so our deployment is now complete. So now we can uh, access it and click on Go to Resource. 
and we can um, deploy our first uh, application. So we can click on Create Apps here, and we can give it a name. So let's say it's uh, MongoDB uh, REST template, for example. I can select Java 21 and click Create. So again, deploying will take a few uh, minutes. Uh, so you will need to uh, wait until the provision, uh, provisioning state here is a success, I think success or something like that. Till it's completely done, updating and deploying, right? Uh, in the meantime, we can do a few things. So you can click uh, here on the MongoDB REST template so we can access it. And uh, we can click, for example, on uh, deployments. Okay, perfect. Uh, we can click on default. And here we can click on configuration. That's where we can set the uh, environment variables I just mentioned a few minutes ago. So you can click on this environment variables. So we need the MongoDB URI, right? So you remember it's MongoDB underscore URI. And for the value, we need to head to our MongoDB Atlas cluster. So here I have MongoDB Atlas available. So if I go to database, as you can see, I have a M0 uh, sandbox deployed uh, already in uh, Ireland. And I can access the connection string by clicking here on connect. Click, click on driver, Java, and make sure I have this URI, right? As you can see, I need the user and password, right, for my MongoDB cluster. So I will retrieve this in a second. And you can create one as well if you, if you need one. So Let's get back here, copy paste here. And here I need to replace username and password. Okay, here. So get back here in database access. I created already a user called Azure with a password and I gave the role uh, read, write, any database. Of course, you can just click here if you want to create your own. So head back here, Azure, and my password is super strong. Super strong, of course. Right. So uh, now that this is done, uh, I need one more thing. So let's head back to our Maxim Spring apps here at the top. Oh, I forgot to save. So here you need to click Save, of course, to save your uh, URI. Let's head back to your application here. And we need something else, because in MongoDB, by default, you cannot access your cluster unless the IP address you are accessing from is um, authorized in the network access list, right? So here, as you can see, I have my home address, but that's it. I don't have the Azure address. So I need to add it. So here in Spring, I can click on networking. And here you can retrieve the outbound IP address, right? So I need to copy paste this and add a new IP address here in MongoDB Atlas. So copy paste the address. I say that this is Azure and I click confirm, right? And this is being deployed right now. Cool. Head back to my applications. Uh, I can now click on apps. And now, as you can see, my provisioning state is succeed succeeded. Uh, so it means I can now deploy. So I can click on Deploy App, and I have all the command lines I need to be able to deploy. So first of all, you will need to install the Azure CLI if you don't have it already. Uh, you can just follow the instructions. It depends on your operating system, of course. So I've done this step already. Once it's done, you can type the uh, command uh, az space login to make sure that uh, you log in with your um, command line tool. Uh, and then you make sure to install as well the uh, extension for Spring, uh, for the Spring applications. Uh, I've done that already. And uh, then you can just type these two commands here. So I will just go ahead and copy paste this command to make sure everything is set correctly. And now I can copy paste this command here and deploy my jar file, the one we built uh, earlier. So I can just copy paste and access my jar file. So for me, it's in the target folder. 
and it's called Java Spring Boot MongoDB Starter 100 jar. And now I can just hit Hunter, and everything should just deploy smoothly and as planned, hopefully. Okay, so deploying. Might take a few seconds, of course. Okay, fantastic. Uh, our application is now deployed. Uh, so let's just scroll back a little because it just uh, came out uh, in one <laughs> in one one big batch. Um, so we can see that uh, it's now deployed successfully. Apparently, we also can see that the Tomcat server started correctly here, and it's now listening uh, on my port. And we can also see the state connected here to MongoDB. Um, so looks like everything is correct, right? We saw that, uh, yeah, it's successfully connected to my MongoDB free tier cluster, right? So everything is now uh, set and in place. So I just need to test now, basically. So let's head to our application. And we can go to, um, to just right here, wait. And so you have a test on point here that you can use, but I can also set an on point directly. So I can click here on assign on point. And this is going to assign a new on point to uh, the service. OK, here it is. So now I can just copy this. And um, I have Swagger uh, configuration deployed in the service. So in theory, I can go to Swagger UI slash index.html. And I should find my Swagger UI. OK, so here I am in my Swagger uh, documentation. And uh, we can uh, try the API. So for example, we can try to create a person with post here. So I can click here, say that I want to try out. I need to remove the underscore the ID because it's going to be provided automatically by MongoDB. Uh, I won't change the values, but I can just say a Maxim, for example, here. And click Execute. And it should just say 201 created, right? All good. And now I can confirm that it worked in MongoDB. Uh, so if I go back to MongoDB Atlas and go back to my deployment database, I can browse my collections here. And if I go to my collection, so by default uh, for this project, it's test and persons. And here I find my object with uh, the name, Maxim, and everything default. Uh, because I left everything by default. So here we are. And I can test also from the REST API. Of course, I can try to get persons, for example, I can try to execute. And of course, I retrieve like the same uh, document with a list here this time because it's person pro, right? So yeah, all good. Hey, so that's a wrap. Thank you very much for watching this video till the end. And I hope you learned something new and I will definitely see you in the next one. See you there.